Hey there, everyone, and welcome to this week's Friday Facts discussion, uh, number 385, Asteroid Collector. I'm Exterminator, and thanks for joining me uh, for another one here. I do apologize. We are a bit late on this one. Uh, I didn't sleep too well last night and got a pretty late start today, but uh, we're here now, and uh, this is actually a fairly technical one, so there's going to be a fair bit of summarization going on, but uh, overall, it is a very cool one to kind of see some more behind the scenes on the asteroid collector so there's nothing brand new shown here but there is some really uh cool and, and actually pretty funny stuff uh for behind the scenes uh so we're just going to start in here i'm going to pretty much just read this first part because i think it's just it's worth reading so uh this is by arendell and uh harusa harusa um, hopefully I'm pronouncing their name correctly. Uh, when I was working on the early space platform concepts, this is from Arendelle, uh, trying to figure out how movable ships would look, uh, we knew that we wanted some way of getting parts of asteroids onto the ship that hadn't decided how it would be done. Uh, basically, the very early stage of things were just placeholder graphics. Uh, essentially, they would just either mock something up with a drawing or, or Arendelle would just pull something uh, from one of their mods, from one of his mods, you know, he made space exploration. So uh, just pull something from that. And this is a look at the early graphics for this. So initially, it was basically just like a tractor beam it is, is how this is set up to work here. Is it would just like shoot out a tractor beam, pull in the asteroid with that. And you know, it's easy enough to animate and code something like that. <clears throat> However, you know, a tractor beam doesn't feel super factorio-esque. Like, it's super sci-fi and, you know, magic ethereal kind of. Uh, in fact, Toyo is obviously kind of sci-fi and futuristic, but it just doesn't really feel right. You know, they say here, and I agree, like that would have just been kind of weird. There's no other uh, like indication or use of tractor beams within the game. Not saying that there couldn't be something new, but it just doesn't really seem to fit, especially when compared up against the like tentacle arms that we do eventually end up having uh, for this. So basically, Arendelle invented five possible options for how this would work uh, with some proof of concept stuff. So the first one is pretty interesting. I'm, I'm kind of glad they didn't do this because to me, this just seems really weird. Uh, rocket guided harpoon or bag. So basically small rockets uh, that would wrap the asteroid chunk in a bag on impact uh, and then pull it to the collector mouth using a tow line. So this just seems like it'd be kind of weird. Uh, you know, again, these are just like concepts, of course, but uh, I'm definitely glad we didn't end up with this one. It just seems a little weird. Uh, a long, a long <laughs> inserter leg arm. Now, this one does like, if there were, if it were not going to be what we currently have with the cool extendy arms, this would have been like my second option. This just seems the closest after what we have to the, uh, to like Factorio. Uh, basically, just an inserter, but dedicated to gra grabbing asteroid chunks. It would put the chunk in the machine mouth uh, or directly onto a belt. So. There's that, um, a paddle, which is an interesting idea. Uh, you know, not the worst thing, but definitely maybe a little bit out there. Uh, basically, you would just bat the asteroid or whatever in the direction of the collector mouth. Uh, number four, now this one's really interesting uh, that they would have considered something like this, uh, is the collector, where basically it would just be like a hole in the platform, and then it has these like, you know, almost like pinball or something. It has like these collect, like these edges things can bounce off of into the mouth this would have been really different uh it would have been kind of interesting you know because it would it would make you consider taking the shape of your platform into consideration but as Aaron Dell says at the end here the downside is it would basically just end up with your platform being a vw or just multiple like w shapes to get these things angled correctly so that was kind of thrown out the window and then lastly <clears throat> excuse me a flexible snake arm which is what we have which is the final product. Uh, so we go into a little more detail here. Basically, unlike the inserter style arm, this would act on the same ground plane as uh, the asteroid chunks and the platform itself, meaning we need to snake around any uh, protruding defenses. Uh, it's an interesting option to build with as a platform shape affects interception time. Uh, and then we see some concept arts down here. So Arendelle thought they could do something pretty cool with the flexible arm idea. And he started with a set of sketches trying to uh, try different machine structures and collector mouse shapes. Arm itself is most similar to the design of real world snake robots, but with it being anchored at one end, it quickly became known as the tentacle. It also uh, is worth noting that he moved the crushing function out of the asteroid collector to a dedicated machine. So uh, yeah, like the, the crusher is no longer part of the grabber. It's a now, you know, a separate machine. 
And this lets the Crusher be used again by some late game uh, advanced recipes and expand the middle of the platform, which is cool. Yeah, this allows you know the grabbers to be used or the Crusher to be used for other stuff or the grabbers too, I, I suppose. Uh, I really like seeing these concept arts of stuff. They've shown concept arts of other things in the past, like before the expansion, just, you know, in the general game development. And, and I really love seeing these, like how things kind of progress and come along. It's always super interesting to me. Uh, so with behind the scenes stuff, this is one of my favorite parts is just seeing, uh, you know, kind of their ideas and how it progressed and what it turned into. So Ando presented this to Kovrex and up to this point, Everyone seemed kind of skeptical on the idea, so it was up to uh, Arendelle's concept art to win everyone over, and it did. As soon as they saw it, they were on board, and I can see why this, I mean, it's, it's freaking awesome. Like, I love I love what we have here. I love how this turned out, uh, and, and, you know, we can see kind of a, a final result of it uh, in, in this previous Friday Facts here. You know, if you forgot or you maybe didn't see this one, you know, this is the final result. This is what we have now, and uh, it's... It's pretty awesome to see this, and, you know, when I first saw this, it was uh, pretty intriguing to me, like, how they would even make this work, and that's what this Friday Facts we're currently on goes into. Now, further down, is how they actually made this work. So, this is the more technical part. This is where I'm going to do a lot of summarization, and uh, just because it, it's just a lot of technical things <laughs> to read through. So... <clears throat> Uh, basically, if they take a step back in time uh, and talk about how the gameplay side of things unfolded in the meantime. So a keystone feature of the platform production cycle is that the collector started its life under uh, Arendelle's hands. This is now written by Harusa. Uh, it was a simpler time. Asteroids were not even a thing back then. So the machine was just uh, an assembler which continuously crafted chunks out of thin air. You know, eventually they started adding in the asteroids, and the next advancement was collect asteroids me uh, mechanically, and this is where our seating hopped in. And basically, uh, if we go down here, uh, at this point the collector could be placed anywhere on the platform, which was a problem because of its reach. It basically meant that you could, like, place the collectors back from the edge, and have them like safe and just kind of where you wanted and then just line the edge of your platform with turrets which they didn't really want to do you know they wanted to avoid that make things you know maybe a little more uh complex for you to figure out uh so they made a requirement that the collectors uh require like open air on one side of them essentially so you have to place them on the edge you know which which i think is fine that makes sense and uh basically the, the whole concept, uh, sorry, <laughs> like I said, I didn't sleep very well. The concept uh, of, you know, of an organic bendable arm for a collector was introduced, as we see above, and now we introduce the Day of the Tentacles. So, the process of designing the bendable arm involved breaking it down into individual features. Uh, so, separating tasks included drawing the arm, moving it between poses, ensuring it weaved around the platform without clipping, and... Uh, preventing collectors from wasting time fighting over chunks. So that's a big thing, right? Like you don't want them just all go like all going for the same chunk and, and fighting over that. Uh, and then we can come down here where uh, Pose were expresses a list of angles and extension amounts, as you can uh, see here in this graphic. And then over here we have link rotations used to draw the collector arms. Uh, a control curve was added to put the swing into the arm movement, which I think this is hilarious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this test so basically next there's a tried adding the control curve which uh <laughs> part of me wishes this was still in just because this is so funny to watch like imagine if this was just happening everywhere i mean it'd probably like it'd make me sick honestly if this were just happening with all of them all the time uh but i i do love the result of this and their tests obviously this is not how it ended up but <laughs> it is quite funny to see this uh, so there's uh, speed consistency challenges. So some of those that arose basically uh, were maintaining in maintaining constant speed due to variations in blending angles, and a method was devised to quickly weight individual angles, project the arm position onto a circle, and measure the distance uh, between poses for a consistent estimate of traveling distance. You can see that here. Uh, so you just kind of have a more consistent method of movement and such with that. Uh, and then <clears throat> it's really interesting to kind of see this whole thing of how they're adjusting this, though. And then 
Uh, we come down here. This is a little bit more of that, but there's uh, some pathfinding. So the pathfinding problem was addressed by implementing a navigation mesh covering open areas with large rectangles, uh, as you can see down here. So this is more of the kind of circle thing, which is interesting because again, like the way this moves is is pretty unique and and honestly like really cool and seems super complex. Uh, so actually seeing how they did this behind the scenes is is really interesting. So down here we have this like kind of grid mesh here. And uh, the nav mesh significantly sped up pathfinding, providing shorter and simpler paths. A non-uniform rational B spline uh, NURBS was used to approximate the polygon nav mesh path and smooth out sharp corners. I have no idea what I just said or read, but <laughs> that's what it is for anyone who does understand that. Uh, you know, again, this is like beyond my scope of understanding what that means, uh, but enhancements and predictions. So. Uh, this is where we get into the part, like, to prevent uh, them fighting over stuff, but also because uh, they encountered an issue where uh, platforms could be moving so fast that, like, the turrets couldn't even turn to shoot anything in time, uh, and then, which meant the grabbers would have a problem of not being able to grab stuff in time. So, uh, they just say, you know, several enhancements were made, including a minimal retraction distance, uh, horizontal wind-up landing and random wiggling of arms leading swings with the base. Uh, predictive features were added to anticipate incoming chunks considering platform speed and arm availability. So basically, uh, the chunks sent out, can, you see here, uh, like uh, like a, you know, a path, basically. Uh, you can see that they couldn't just constantly test every chunk, so it's necessary to narrow down a selection. Um, basically, every time a new chunk spawns, it will cast a line forward and register with all collectors along the way, so then the collectors can like assign, be assigned which thing grabs what, and they're not fighting over stuff, and then the speed doesn't really matter that much uh, because they would be registered in advance, right? So uh, you can see here, it can, it's going pretty dang fast, and it, it's not really an issue uh, for the arms, or even really, I don't think, for the turrets. Uh, the arms, I think, are probably more important, although you need the turrets to shoot the stuff anyway. So <laughs> I guess they're both important. Uh, but yeah, so the conclusion to all this is basically once all the major work was wrapped up, it was just a matter of finishing off the smaller details. Uh, before the collector was ready to go into Master Branch, this is things like building restriction, blueprint support, copy paste, etc. Uh, since the nav mesh and nerve system were uh, all new code. There was a lot of writing tests, chasing down edge cases, and fine tuning. Overall, in their play testing, we're happy to say the Astro Collector works really well to give the platforms a unique look and gameplay that we were hoping for, which is absolutely true. It's they're awesome. They're like very eye catching and, and unique. You know, because concept wise, it's kind of like an inserter, but you know, it's a very different type of action. It, maybe not action, but definitely like animation, different type of animation. It just looks super cool. Like. I, I can probably see myself just sitting here with a screen open, something like this, without the lines and just watching them work. Uh, it's it's a really great uh, conclusion for, for all their uh, tests and stuff they did. I really like where it ended up, and uh, it's, it's super awesome, again, to see the behind-the-scenes stuff. So there we go. Like, you know, I know there was a lot of summarization. If you are super into this technical... Uh, stuff and you understand more of this than I do, then definitely worth giving this a read. There will, as always, be a link in the description to this uh, Friday Facts. Uh, for me, you know, I didn't want to just like read all of it verbatim just because I really don't understand a lot of it and uh, it was just uh, kind of wordy, uh, but obviously it had to be to explain what's going on. Uh, but overall, I hope you guys did uh, enjoy this and, you know, it's again just super cool to see the behind the scenes stuff, how they do things, all the work that goes into stuff. And again, you know, we can see more and more why the expansions may be taking so long when you see how much work goes into things, you know, just like this or, uh, you know, elevator rails and all this other stuff we've talked about where there's just so much work that goes into it behind the scenes. So uh, that's going to do it for this one. As always, I do like to hear your thoughts down below. You know, if if there is something I just completely got wrong, uh, let me know. Uh, just generally, I'd like to hear your, your thoughts on this. And, uh, and yeah, I... I'd also really just generally be curious, like, out of the concept five options that were presented by Arendelle, uh, which is your favorite? Like, is your favorite what we ended up with? Would you have preferred one of these other options? Again, for me, what we ended up with is my favorite for sure. The second one would be this long inserter. Probably after that would be the paddle. This one just seems really weird. You know, I can see they're just throwing ideas out there for sure, but 
uh, I'm very happy with where we are. So as always, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy that interesting, a like is appreciated. If you're new, uh, welcome. Feel free to uh, subscribe to keep up with future content. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.